Now, another very important relationship that is between China and the EU. Vice Premier has called for Europe to officially recognize the country as a market economy. It's becoming a more pressing topic at the China Meets Europe Summit in Hamburg, Germany, as the continent ponders how the U.S. election result might impact its trade policies. CCTV's Guy Henderson reports. A warm welcome for Hamburg's guest of honor. China's Vice Premier Liu Yandong came here to pitch the strengths of the Chinese economy and urge Europe to continue to take advantage. I would like to stress that maintaining free trade and expanding two way investment serve the fundamental interests of China, Germany, and Europe. Protectionism will only lead to a lose lose situation and is certainly not the right way out for the global economy. It may not be so clear cut. In the corridors and conference halls of the China Meets Europe Summit, delegates are still trying to digest how much the world may have changed since November the 8th. Europe faces a dilemma in the wake of the US election result. On the one hand, there are those who argue that an America turning towards protectionism presses the economic case for building trade ties with countries like China as quickly as possible. Others argue quite the opposite that with growing public skepticism about trade liberalization generally, that moving too quickly would be politically risky. The latter seems to just about prevail here, at least for now. There's talk the European Commission may apply the brakes in talks over a comprehensive investment agreement with China. They believe that uh, uh, these um, agreements, they don't protect the local production, they don't protect the employment, and uh, they, they want to change this. Um, uh, they want to, uh, to actually to, uh, to be very cautious and go slowly on that. What I see therefore is that uh, probably we'll have a four-year extension. There is still broad support from both sides for a deal at some point. The bilateral investment agreement would cover liberalizations, uh, but it was, would also cover investment protection, uh, so as a classical investment treaty, so both sides would gain from that. Uh, and also the kind of dialogue and debates that we have in the process of these negotiations will certainly also contribute to trust building. Still, there's a sense that European policymakers may put regaining the trust of voters back home ahead of furthering it with its partners abroad. Guy Henderson, CCTV, Hamburg.